uh, to avoid, but it's definitely caused a bit of a uh, bit of carnage in the in the group here. Yeah, it certainly has. Well, what a great response from Mahawi Kudush, the Eritrean rider who was off his bike not so long ago. He's on his back, but he quickly remounted and he's quickly closed the gap to uh, Pronsky, his teammate, who had dragged uh, half the Bardiani CSF squad with him. And they're all looking to try and take advantage of that that difficult moment. And so uh, they seem to have uh, done well. The Androni Giacatelli squad have been pretty much significantly distanced, so they had a bit of a reset, as I think they might have been swapping bikes and trying to help each other. And Bardiani CSF have uh, attacked. And uh, Kudos as well wants to run the old one too here. Pronsky was trying to set it up for Kudos. Kudos puts a little bit of distance between himself and the rest. Well, Declan, I, I don't think Pronsky was all that happy about Kudos actually uh, riding across to uh, to the group there. He was quite um, quite happy with the two Bardiani riders uh, in his little group. And then he saw Kudos basically dragging himself across to them uh but now he's clearly looking very very strong out here and uh it's looking to be in 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 a position where he can uh attack a little bit of movement here from behind uh, somewhat surprisingly uh uh, Lorenzo Fortunato, the blue jersey here of Eolo Cometa, has been delayed. Uh, delayed potentially by that crash, but with six and a half kilometers to go, he's got a little bit of work to do to get back on terms here because Mahawi Kudos is a very, very talented climber and he's seen his opportunity. He's decided to play his card and he's playing it early. Yeah, very early, uh, and I think that's where Fortunato, um, he, was, he wasn't really expecting this to happen just yet, uh, and he was sitting a little bit further down the group, and then with that uh, crash in the corner as well, it held him up somewhat, uh, but, but now you can see that he's it's just riding within himself, he's well you know, used to these kind of efforts on the steeper, steeper climbs, and it's just a question of I can ride within my capabilities here, and if I get back on, I get back on. And if I don't, then, you know, it wasn't to be. And Pronsky, meanwhile, will track the uh, two riders from Bardiani CSF. The first of these is Filippo Zana, 22-year-old rider, who's trying to winch himself up this climb in a slightly lower cadence, which means a slightly higher gear than Kudos. Kudos trying to tap out a rhythm that is uh, suitably horrific, but one that he can sustain. The overall winner of uh, Tour de Rwanda in 2019 also got a uh, pretty solid result, 30 overall in the Tour of Turkey that year as well. So Kudos with a narrow advantage, but still the little matter of a third of this climb remaining. Well, the Queen stage is living up to its billing on the second stage of Adriatica Ionica as Marhawi Kudos has taken his leave of the rest. A little bit of excitement with that uh, surprise crash in the middle of the lead group has helped to excite uh, everyone and perhaps has just uh, shaken them out of their torpor, their pain and suffering. It was set by the pace of the Gazprom Rosvelo squad. A little bit of an injection of pace indeed by Vadim Pronsky from the Astana squad and that has ultimately led to a bit of a crash a reset extraordinarily enough uh, Manawi Kodas has managed to get back up and in and he's the one that's gone attacking that's Fortunato in the blue jersey who's dragging a couple of Bardiani CSF riders uh, with him trying to get back on terms another couple of Bardiani CSF still involved here and Kodas has been has been retained under the combined forces of Bardiani CSF and indeed uh, uh, Vadim Kudos. I think this is Carboni that has uh, done the yeah. work for the Bardiani CSF squad in in getting back on terms with Mahawi Kudos. So how do uh, how do the Astana squad play it? Do they just try and set a searing tempo or are we going to see a full-blooded attack from uh, from Pronsky? Well, at this moment, I think uh, just keep on, on setting a strong a strong pace. We've still got 5.7 kilometres to go of the climb. You know, that's, that's a long way. Um, so I don't think it's really the time to start really one-twoing uh, the uh, Bardiani riders. And... They also need to worry a little bit about this man here because I don't think that uh, Fortunato is completely out of the running for this uh, this stage yet. So with, with that, yeah, just keep on keep on pushing and and try and make it really hard for for Fortunato to to get back in. If he does, obviously they got two more riders there, but it is also a climb, so it's not it's not the same as it would be 
having that numerical advantage um, on the flat in a breakaway would be massive. On a climb like this, it obviously comes down to what you've got left in your legs. Plenty of Italian representation close to the front, but this is Group 2 on the road with Lorenzo Fortunato, recent uh, Giro stage winner, who's setting a searing tempo that is uh, proving not to be too taxing for Alessandro Monaco, or indeed Luca Covili is the other Bardiani rider trying to get back on terms. Uh, that going backwards from the front, I believe, is Zana. Zana's struggling to follow the pace, and now he's uh, just got his teammate Carboni, who's the, the meat in that Astana sandwich. And it's, uh, it's now Vadim Pronsky that is setting a tempo that's causing a lot of pain from the two behind. Pronsky really flying here. Five, still five and a bit kilometers to go. They've been on this hill for such a long time. It's an absolute grueler, isn't it? And uh, just yeah. signs that he's starting to crack there with the camera pulled away from it. But I think Pronsky could be starting to do a bit of damage here. No, he's well. He's definitely doing damage both both to, to himself and uh, and the <laughs> riders with him. But um, you know, I, I I think that he's getting the information in his ear that um, you know Fortunato is working hard here. He's not worrying about the the two Bardiani riders. Um, and I also think there's a little bit of an inside battle, internal battle between the two Astana riders, uh, who's going to go for for this stage and. Uh, at the moment, it seems like, you know, uh, they all want to show how strong they, they both are. And uh, at the moment, it's actually working out all right for them. Yeah, so less a sort of a, a coordinated team at, uh, approach to this and more just who's got the biggest engine, who's the best athlete on this ridiculously steep climb. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, but that's that's climbing, isn't it? It's, it is very individual. Yes, you can get some... A little bit of draft, but at the end of the day, it's it's all about how good are you uphill. Um, well, how good is Marawi Kudus going to be? Because Pronsky tried to crack them. Carboni managed to uh, follow uh, that first effort. And now Kudus has decided to put a bit of daylight between himself and the rest. And Carboni knows there's only one rider here to do the chasing. It's himself. Immediately wells himself to the back wheel of Marawi Kudus. And that was a fantastic response. Yeah, definitely was. And I think um, Carboni has to be really, really quick at responding to these attacks that, that are coming. Um, if he leaves himself, a, uh, you know, 10, 15, 20 metres to, to work and sort of grind his way back onto the back wheel, that takes a lot of energy. So um, as, if you're as a, as a climber able to respond straight away and just jump on the wheel, um, you tend to save a lot of energy by, by doing so. Well, Pronsky is the next one to fire a salvo on this climb that has uh, played witness to war for real in the past. A very significant strategic point in in uh, Italian military history and trade history as well. And it's uh, uh, it's been defended manfully and uh, successfully in the past by the uh, by the Italian army. And now. The defence is all Carboni as he attempts to try and hang on with the blue jerseys that are attacking one after the other. It's Pronsky now on the front once more, trying to uh, just set a tempo and perhaps waiting to see where the next attack is coming from. You would imagine it's going to be the man at the back, number three, who's going to deliver the next blow to Carboni if he has the legs to do it. I mean, that's the question. I mean, it wants to, you know, eventually they might just run out of a bit of breakfast, but uh, Marawi Kudus, the 27-year-old from Eritrea, setting a deep and decent tempo but they've got to keep these guys behind as well the chase group seem uh, seem to be making a bit of progress perhaps yeah they seem to be and uh, we're just coming up to to one of the steepest parts of uh, the final couple of kilometers here now it's up around about 12 percent on this part so this is where you know it really starts to um to to show how much energy you got left from from the climb and uh I guess we're going to have to find out how good the Astana riders are, how much have they got left after a strong pace has been set all, all of this climb, really.
Yeah, you see the, the riders just uh, slowing what, to what appeared to be a crawl. It would have felt like that for them as well, but as long as you can feel yourself to be as strong as the riders you're around, that'll uh, help you to retain the morale to continue this uh, this relentless pace. And uh, speaking of relentless pace, it's the blue jersey of Fortunato that's doing all the work, and the way things are going could well be dragging uh, three Bardiani riders up to the head of affairs once more. And I, I think it just shows you that on such a steep climb, there is a draft effect at the at the speed that professional riders ride up these climbs there is a, definitely some advantage to riding in the wake of another rider on front yeah w without a shadow of a doubt and, and it, obviously it also depends on how strong the wind is uh, up on the mountain um but yeah i mean these guys are going fast enough definitely to have a a form of um advantage sitting on on, on the wheel uh, but it also, it, a lot of the time, it also helps you to just you focus on the rider or the wheel in front of you rather than, rather than on the on the mountainside. And and when you look up and you see, oh, you know, we got that long to go to the top of the mountain, um, it kind of starts to start to play with your with your mind a little bit. Well, savage job done by Carboni to hang on here as Kudish sets the tempo and looks around himself and realizes that the pace that they're going up this hill is not the equal of Lorenzo Fortunato of the Cometa squad. And what about the Bardiani CSF team? Because they've now put another three riders into the mix. Remarkably, uh, they're of the seven riders up front going to have four, no less than four riders are represented in the mix. It looks like its pace could be a little bit telling here for Luca Covilli. He's being distanced, but still there's some involvement, and that's why the Astana team have got to get going once more. They don't want to bring Fortunato into it. Just as he was about to make the junction, the Astana squad uh, get on the pedals again, and Carboni inevitably has to find a way to respond. So the gap opens up once more as Pronsky goes to the front, and Fortunato, well, he hasn't panicked, but uh, he's lost a couple of seconds, gain a few, lose a few. Hopefully it's going to be a net result for him. Well, um, if if he panics and and starts to go after them, um, you know, if you go into red after after such a long time on 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 a mountainside like this, um, you know, he'll run out of legs very quickly. So he's far better off. Just he knows that he's riding faster than they are when they settle into a rhythm. Um, so just carry on plugging away. Uh, he's still got three kilometers to play with, and I'm I'm sure that if the the riders out front here now, the two Astana and riders and and Carboni are going to start looking at each other again and he'll be back in there in no time. Well, Covilli has just about the gradient eases slightly, and that's to the advantage of Covilli getting back to that second group on the road. But still, it's uh, Pronsky, and they, well, they're looking behind themselves as much as they're looking ahead because they're really worried about Fortunato coming up. And Fortunato out of the saddle now, making a big play to just get back on terms, have a little reset, and have a think about it. Down to just six seconds as uh, Pronsky uh, leads Carboni and Kudus inside the final three kilometers of of what's been a gripping climb up to Chima Grappa on stage two of Adriatica Ionica. And Fortunato is surely going to get back on here into the closing stages with, uh, well, less than three kilometers left of this climb. And Bardiani CSF have had the numbers in abundance, but you wonder just how much longer Alessandro Monaco can uh, can stand this. But the, they're already suffering here. This is where the gradient is at its worst. The final three kilometers, perhaps the most arduous of a climb that is fully 18.8 kilometers long. Uh, Monaco is... Uh, He's looking for a little bit of uh, assistance or he's looking for a little bit of encouragement or whatever, but uh, remarkably, Bardiani CSF so well represented, perhaps encouraging Covilli to get back up there and in there as well. Yeah, he, he, I think he just made that international sign for, for I, I need a drink, but obviously within the last 2.8 kilometers of a race, you can't actually take any more drinks from from the team car. So unfortunately, he's he's on his own unless uh, one of his teammates got, got a bit of a drink to spare spare for him. Um, but yeah, I mean, this this is incredible by uh, Bardiani Chiesef, who's got four riders in contention here for the top seven. Um, but I still think we, we've got another couple of attacks to come out of uh, the Astana riders. They're, they're both looking still pretty strong in, in this group. Uh, Carboni obviously has been the one who's been able to respond to it. But what's got Fortunato got left in his legs? 
Yeah, and how are Bardiani CSF going to play it? Well, Carboni, as you say, is the man that's been up front for much of the second half of this climb uh, in the company of Marhawi Kudos, who is uh, on the attack now. Kudos decides to launch two and a half kilometers still to go. And they're being careful around those bends. They're tight and twisty, and the sort of speeds they're carrying into them requires a little bit of extra attention. And Kudos, uh, looking around himself, realizes there's an almost instant response. And now with Fortunato up there, it's changed the mix a little bit. Bardiani CSF have the numbers. Question is, do they have the legs that go with those numbers to try and uh, respond to this one? And as you uh, perhaps suggested, it was the Astana Premier Tech team, the other uh, squad with more than one representative that are continuing to launch these attacks. And Pronsky, uh, well, it was almost his, uh, his honour and his responsibility to be the next one to attack after Kudus. Oh, he's uh, starting to disappear now a little bit. Uh, Filippo Zana. Well, Zana indeed was distanced quite a way a long time ago on that climb, and it looks as if maybe he's just uh, he's just measured his effort nicely and could well be coming up to join them on the hill. So it's a fantastic response by Zana that he didn't just uh, weaken and crack. And he's, well, hoping that he can possibly get back up. But they're at ones and twos and sixes and sevens, and they're all over the place as these uh, final attacks into the, the final two kilometers. So Pronsky with that uh, narrow margin, and it's, uh, well, just, uh, is it going to be a significant one? 1,800 metres remaining, five seconds to the good over the chasers. And you wonder whether Vadim Pronsky, the Kazakh rider, can possibly hang on. Well, he's desperately, frantically going to leave it up to the rest. It's inevitably now the... Uh, the man Lorenzo Fortunato of Iolo Cometa, who's trying to do the job and do the job for Ivan Basso and for Alberto Contador, the team principals of Iolo Cometa, that have, uh, well, they've stepped up in the last, in the, well, in the, this year in particular to this level, second division level, and what, uh, what an effort they've made. Yeah, but Declan, right now I think uh, Fortunato, if he wants to win this, he needs to start to uh, to hit the panic button a little bit. Eight seconds now with 1.6 kilometers to go, and at this altitude, it's so so hard to to bridge uh, even the smallest of gaps. If you have to go into into red, um, you you're gonna end up paying for it. And he's got two riders on the wheel just waiting to pounce as well. Pronsky, 23 years of age, man from Kaz uh, Kazakhstan, as I say, from the capital city, Astana. Third overall in the Tour of Langkawi in 2019, and uh, an overall success, which really it was the first significant result of, of note, is they uh, took the Giro Ciclista de la Valle de Oste Mont Blanc in 2018. It's a long-winded title, but it was <laughs> yeah, in the... <laughs> in the way of those races that are at sort of minor level. They often have names that are as long as the race themselves, but uh, it was a good victory, and it's uh, allowed him to step up into the big show. He's been with the Astana squad at World Tour level uh, since the beginning of last year, and the second year of a three-year deal, uh, looking to take what would be a very significant first victory for Astana. Yeah, definitely. Th this this looks like uh, Pronsky is, is riding away with it. Um, someone... He's going to have to make a move here now. It's either going to have to be Carboni or uh, Fortunato that really need to step uh, step it up another notch here to uh, to try and bring bring Pronsky back. 
Yaprowski is another man who's got the Giro in his legs. So is he going to get that that lift that you get when you sort of uh, slump over the finish line at the end of 21 tough days? Uh, give yourself a week or two to rest and then suddenly come out twice as strong as you ever were before. Well, that's the way he believes he is at the moment. But that gap isn't isn't extending. If anything, it's coming down. Yeah, it's slowly but surely coming down a couple of seconds, but it's it's hard hard work you know it looked like uh, Carboni was about to launch an attack just then yeah well Carboni's got to try and do something 900 meters remaining still a long way still uh, uh, well within touching distance but Vadim Pronsky seeing his advantage dwindle by just uh, one single second and it's that front wheel rolling along <laughs> sort of left and right almost like uh, Jens Voigt or someone like that it's uh, He's going side to side as much as he's going forward, but it's effective stuff nonetheless for Lorenzo Fortunato. Yeah, definitely. He's got a very distinctive style, hasn't he? But this man here now, just is he, has he got the legs though? Because that is, he's just lost another second to that group behind, and they now feel that they are borderline within uh, distance of, of attacking across that gap. And if uh, Carboni has got anything left in his legs, I think that he could be the man to uh, to launch this next attack. Oh, well, it almost goes without saying, but not quite entirely. So I will say it that uh, the rider who does win this stage will, of course, don the leader's blue jersey at the conclusion of today's activities because all of these riders uh, that were in the leading group of 25, indeed, were in that lead group that sprinted out for glory yesterday. And the overall race leader, Elia Viviani, as you would have expected, has been long since distanced. So uh, the rider on the line will take uh, the not insignificant matter of 10 bonus seconds, of course, six and four seconds for second and third across the line as well. Will there be a bit of daylight to go with it? And will Pronsky manage to hang on? He's down to the final 600 metres. I think he's starting to believe now this could happen for him, but still, well, they're showing at five seconds. Is it really five? It could be a little bit more than that. I think yeah. he's, he's got a shot at this here. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's a bit more, but interestingly, Kudos is, is going after his teammate. Well, he's seen the opportunity, get a little bit of daylight. If he gets the daylight, why not? But it is an unusual development. And then how he could, kudos, sees the chance to go for glory. And he races across the gap. And Bronsky's not too happy about that one. No, definitely not. I wouldn't be either. And uh, unless Kudos wins the stage here now, uh, I think there will be some very, very strong words in the, uh, in the team bus after the stage. Well, Fortunato is either a very cool customer indeed or he's almost out in his wheels because no instant response from him, no instant response too from Giovanni Carboni, the 25-year-old uh, Italian from the Bardiani CSF squad, from the uh, six riders in the group for much of the hill, the four that have been there for the, in recent times. They're down to just one and Carboni's not oh, equal to it. As here he Fortunato comes. Go. Fort Fortunato is straight past Bronski, straight on to Malhawi Kunas. Look at the run to the finish line here. He's finding something extraordinary and what about that for pouncing on the line inside the closing meters he gets across the gap and times it to absolute perfection and Kudos comes almost to a halt at the finish line absolutely devastated he can't believe he thought he had it done but Fortunato timed his run to perfection to get the result wow that is that is some ride that Fortunato has done on this climb here now just the way he rode his, his way back onto the front group took his time and just just slowly worked away at it um, and then that that final 300 meters was it that he just had such a big acceleration left and uh, there was nothing that the two Astana riders could do to that. Yeah, and 300 metres, to be able to sustain it on a, uh, at a climb like this. Look at this. I mean, Kudos is almost uh, just planning his victory celebration. He can't believe it. It happened right on the line. And you've got to, you know, Kudos will look at the video again and realise that he was closed down by a man who was probably 10 seconds behind him with uh, no more than 150 metres remaining <laughs> of the stage. It was an extraordinary closing effort. Yeah, definitely. But uh, but I also think that um, you know they Astana played that wrong, and I think uh, Kudas. Um, I'm not sure that that was the smartest move that he's he's ever made going after his teammate. If you're going to do such a move, then then you have to be 100% confident that you are going to win this. As uh, 
Davide Rebelin gets in here. I think he's just ridden inside the top 10. A remarkable performance on a day of a remarkable and noteworthy performances in this second stage of Adriatica. Ionica, they'll be coming up this hill for a long time. This one is a bit of a grind, and I think the uh, riders, uh, the group, the bunch just over 100 strong today is going to be coming in for a long, long time yet. As we take in the scenes over Chima Grappa today, the blue jersey shortly to be donned uh, by... Your stage winner, Lorenzo Fortunato, one of the coming stars of Italian cycling. He's a man we're going to be hearing about for a little while just yet. Gazprom Rosvelo, it all went backwards for them, really, didn't it, after their show of strength in the early stages. We can be looking at this for a while. I think the Fortunato household have much to celebrate in recent, uh, recent weeks, but this is certainly going to be a sweet memory. Yeah, definitely. But it, it just goes to show as well, I think, what a, a stage win in, in a Grand Tour does for your your confidence as much as your physical ability yes never believed that he was out of it and it was such a cool customer on the hill as well timed his uh, closing effort to absolute perfection it's lorenzo fortunato that gets the victory for aolo cometa ahead of marhavi kudos and vadim pronsky second and third for astana giovanni carboni leads the uh, bardiani csf charge up the hill and it's an overall lead now five seconds over kudos for lorenzo fortunato vadim pronsky uh, th sits third but uh, they're going to struggle to unseat Fortunato in tomorrow's flat stage.